Previously on The Business. Now, let's turn our attention to uh, to more things sporty, shall we? Joining us in studio today from P Management is Karabo Matang, uh, the Managing Director uh, for P Management South Africa. Uh, P Management is uh, is doing really well by the looks of things. Let's talk straight away about what you guys get up to. You're in the sports industry. Uh, you're obviously a management uh, style business. Uh, you manage famous types, some really well-known names. Tell us about P Management. Well, it's actually quite funny. P management is going into a transition, so I should be speaking about a whole new direction. But I'll explain to you what we have been doing okay, great. for the past seven years. Great. We're an agency that represents athletes, particularly in football. We've got a FIFA and an FA, li- FA license, which means we can move players overseas and we can move players locally. So we, are, we pride ourselves in being a very niche kind of company where we look at amateur players Uh, which is different to what our competitors do. We go out and scout amateur players from amateur clubs, and then we move them into the professional scene, which is much harder because you're dealing with unknown product, if I can call players product, um, and then uh, manage their lives from that. It's very difficult. It's very strenuous, demanding, and financially stressful (laughs) but uh, that's what the company's been doing for the past seven years we're diversifying the business and what we're doing we're looking more into sports law and representing players that are not really um, well represented in the legal aspects you know they're signing contracts they don't understand they try to get out of the deal and they can't move so that's what we're looking at it, it would seem to me, though, is, uh, and, and I mean no disrespect by this, so you're going to correct me as we go here, uh, but, but I, it would seem to me as though the South African football scene is a watered-down version uh, of the European scene. I mean, you see hundreds of millions of pounds uh, slash dollars being exchanged uh, when it comes to players and contracts, etc. Sure. They're always in the news. Uh, yet here, it, it does seem as though there's movement, but uh, the, the figures are a lot less. Just tell us about how, how they compare. How does the European football scene compared to the South African football scene? I mean, the European scene is everything that everyone looks up to in the football industries worldwide, Mm. including the US, including the Australian leagues, you know. And I think South Africa has got one of the best in the world. We're ranked number 16 in terms of premiership league um, with where we are with our standards, you know. World Cup did some phenomenal things for us in terms of infrastructure, but um, we're number one in Africa. And to be honest, the figures are quite high and we can compete with some of the Scandinavian leagues in terms of what we can offer um, pro players. Well, I, well, I know that you, you're not going to disclose figures because that's obviously completely personal and, and, and we're not going to go I there. I would have to kill you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, but what I do want to know is what's an, what's an average price for a player? I mean, we hear, we hear of hundreds of, of millions for, for some ridiculously overpaid top players. Yeah. Uh, what are we talking here? Are we talking tens of millions? Are we talking 50 million? Are we talking 100 million rand? As in any industry, you know, there's an entry point where players from where I used to be at amateur level coming into the into the pro will get very little mm. compared to the player that will quickly move up. Mm. Um, so we're looking at anything from 5,000 Rand for an entry level player in the pro league to about a good 150,000, 300,000 for some of the top players that you see in Bafana. Mm. That's and that's per month, by the way. Okay. Wow. Well, that, that'll do. <laughs> Thank you very much. That will help. <laughs> that'll do. <laughs> and this is besides the signing on fee. Um, sure. We obviously know that there's a signing on fee, which is the image rights, buying out the player's image rights to use his image. That now is going crazy. Um, at the last check, the highest was about 1.8 million. Mm. And this is per year. Fantastic. Fantastic. Fantastic news for the local industry. I'd like to turn our attention back to to the management side of things for you guys. Uh, And a lot of people listening who may be in that business or may want to deal with your business uh, in in terms of how it all works. What is your role as a management company? That might sound like an obvious question, but what what are are the nuts and bolts of of daily managing players? What's a a typical day in in, in your life, for example? Very simple. The nice thing about um, representing players is that it's a very seasonal type of of uh, situation because you can only move players and place players in window periods. So that's in the off season. So we're currently in a window period right now, which ends on the 31st of Jan. And again, in the um, June to August period. Now that's 
we call that silly season mm. because a lot of players are moving mm. around. You're talking to other clubs. You're trying to get players out of contract into a new contract. So that's the crazy. So my typical day then is trying to really just finish my negotiations and finish my transfer deals. Otherwise, in season, we're profiling players to the media. We're trying to get sponsorship and endorsements, which are very slow at the moment <laughs> um, because, you know, corporates are pulling out of um, sponsoring football and sports in general. But, yeah, that's what my day looks like. How easy is it to kind of move a player overseas to an overseas league? Hello, Korea. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. Quite difficult in football. Um, if you look at the rate, and not that this is not really pertaining to any agency. This is what the market is like, generally. I, and it's the first question I ask any player when we're playing the competitive thing of this agent versus that agent. I say, in the last window period, who in South Africa moved overseas? And then there's a long pause. Because you really have to think yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Mm. Yeah. Players aren't moving as quickly as they used to, mm. you know, back in the day. And I believe that after Bongani Kumalo uh, and the like. There's a recent one now. Overseas, signing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's wait for the pause. Go ahead, Kriya. I can't remember. Comfort, what's his name? No, Serrero moved to uh, Ajax Amsterdam um, about two seasons ago. Oh, okay, sorry. Can't help so, you so, <laughs> so it's very difficult to move South African talent overseas. And I think I've got the answer. Okay, the answer is that our players peak quite late, yeah. okay? And we want to move our players quite late. If you look at the likes of Simpiwa Shabalala, and there was a big hoo-ha about him. And I mean, after the World Cup, he was supposed to be a player that moved mm. overseas quite, mm. I mean, he scored a very brilliant opener for us against Mexico. And we thought, oh, he's out the door, you know? And people are blaming his agents and it, it's not the agents. Mm. You know, players, whether we like it or not, move themselves. If you have a player who's performing, there's going to be a demand for him. Mm. So unfortunately, we move players late. And also, our clubs can afford to request what some European clubs are, 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 are asking you know, for transfers. And people are still looking down on us. They forget that we've got the sponsorship. Mm. You know? mm. uh, the Vodacoms yeah. of the world can pay mm. um, chiefs and pirates some crazy figures mm. that can compete with some European um, Premier Leagues, you know. So it, it, it's, a, it's a conundrum. And I have a question. I, I watch Entourage a lot, and it obviously has to do with uh, agents as well. And uh, now I, it's, it's my dream to be an agent, <laughs> but it's not, that, it's not that easy. Not at all. So what's not the process of kind of, you know, getting accredited and getting, you know, affiliated with people like FIFA? There's so many unregistered agents in South Africa. I mean, you have 13 accredited agents and you have a gazillion unregistered agents. Just because it's so difficult to become a recognized agent, okay, you would apply to your member association, so that would be SAFA if you're a South African resident, and then they would want a tax clearance certificate, a police clearance certificate, um, your CV, your uh, bank statement, to kind of say, okay, you're a person of integrity who can sit so that's the, just the criteria they use for you to allow you to sit. And then you pay a 5,000 rand to sit and possibly not even pass because it's an international exam set by FIFA, which is extremely difficult. I failed it twice. I only passed on my third time. Hmm. And then I had to come up with insurance for 1 million. So it's quite difficult. Wow. And that's not the end. Then you're on probation for six months. And then they say, okay, yes, you are now officially a recognized agent. So you don't just walk in the door, do oh, you? Oh, I wish. <laughs> 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 it says, Yakaraba, that you are the first woman in South Africa to be accredited by the South African Football Association. Uh, is that true? Correct. In Africa, actually. And, uh, Has it grown? Yes, in South Africa. I'm no. high-fiving you in my head across the <laughs> desk here. Bang, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, there's another lady, um, Mrs. Bester from Bumalanga, who's now the second agent, so high-five to her. Um, but yeah, it's, it's few and far between. Is it a very male-dominated industry? Of course, of so, course. So, so you, you've, you're standing up to all these men around you. Uh, surely that's the point of differentiation, I would imagine, for, for some of your, uh, uh, your talent on your books. Correct. I mean, um, people have asked me in different interviews, is that a disadvantage? And I say, how? I think no. it's an advantage. I mean, there are so many agents. I'm yeah. the only woman. People yeah. want to hear yeah. what I have to say. Yeah. And people want to analyze and see if I have what it takes to be an agent, you know. So it really sets me apart. And uh, honestly, it gets me in the door. 
Uh, okay, so so what is the future of this this business? Uh, you, you're taking it into the the legal side now. I see you, you're currently dabbling in law. You're studying very hard as well to get into that. You're obviously um, you're obviously going to take the, the the company into that direction. How does it kind of migrate into that? What, what's the legal side of stuff? You know, the the P management is moving more and more away from the everyday hassle of finding the next big thing mm. and then wrestling over agents to keep him and then trying to place him to more looking at sports legal services. So sports law, we're going to be very big in. Um, we're going to be representing players not just in South Africa, but in the boards of CAF, which we have done with the likes of Amanda's sister, who was charged of doping, and it was found that a SAFA doctor had actually given her the wrong stuff. So we're going to be representing clients against doping, and not just in football. We want to go across the board. Mm. We want to represent clubs um, in dispute. We want to represent federations. So we're moving away from just the everyday hustle and bustle to a bigger picture and something more sustainable. Unfortunately, being an agent is about the everyday hustle and this team can get get, get out of you you mm, know if you mm. want something more sustainable a legacy for your children I believe that's the way to go. All right, fantastic. We're going to leave it there because we're now almost out of time. Uh, Karabo Matang, the uh, managing director from P Management. I wish you all the best this year. Thank you. I yes. hope that you have a fantastic run. I receive. Uh, when does that window close? 31st of January. Luckily, I don't have any work. <laughs> <laughs> are your players happy where they are? <laughs> My players are settled. <laughs> we, we always appreciate our guests coming into the studio, and I know your time is valuable. The Business on balls.co.za Brought to you by FNB Business Banking.